Well, thank you everyone for joining today's meeting. A little bit of notice um, uh, with the, you know, the, the one day, the Monday minders coming a little late and it's also a day later than we usually have it. So I, I appreciate everybody for joining today. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to call to order and, and so we could do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, which I'm excited to share. Like I said, I, I have a video of the flag, so it'll work. <laughs> oh, system preferences. Hmm. Okay, maybe this is not going to work. Screen. It should be at the bottom. Preferences. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. Hold on. Does anyone know where system preferences are? What message are you getting when you hit on uh, share screen? It says, oh, allows uh, okay, actually open system preferences. Here, up here. Okay, here we go. This the security. But I don't, I, like I said, I'm not sure this is going to work. Okay. There should be an option to share like a tab or your entire screen. Thing it, it's um, yeah, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't even like give me the. It gives me an option, but it's all like it's desktop and it's all locked. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. That's okay. okay. You just do it like that. I just do it like this. Okay, so let's. Go. I pledge allegiance to the flag. America. The Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so welcome again, everybody. Um, thank you again for joining. Uh, I would share the agenda with you, but for some reason, my screen is not. Oh, see, now it's actually working. Oh. Let me see if I can. Okay, see, this is the flag. <laughs> that I was trying to share. So I'm glad I was able to do it. <laughs> okay, let's take that. And now let me actually just share the agenda. Oh, well, yay. Let's see if I can share the agenda. Okay, here we go. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so the first item we have today is the administrator's report. I know Mrs. Blevins is unable to join, but we're very happy to have Mrs. Menderada. Um, if you could just share your report. Sure, thank you. Um, you might want to unshare the screen. Sure. Thank you. I know this is our first meeting uh, this year, so happy new year to everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. So I do have a few updates. Uh, I'll start with COVID updates. Starting January, the district has started a new dashboard for reporting COVID cases. It is hosted on our Edison Public School website. Um, moving forward, no individual letters would be shared for COVID. Overall, our COVID numbers are fairly low and most of our students are present in the school. 
Mrs. Blevins shared the new COVID guidelines uh, from central office via the Monday Minders. If you look at this week's Monday Minder, there is a video link as well as a Google slideshow um, giving details of uh, you know, quarantine time and um, COVID protocols. Additionally, the district is offering a COVID-19 Pfizer vaccination for, uh, for students aged 5 to 11, they are doing the initial dose, and for ages 12 and up, initial dose and booster dose are being offered. Um, again, if you look at the Monday Miter, the link uh, is uh, embedded in the Monday Miter, you'll be able to access it via that. Um, and I know we're all in this together, and we appreciate all your support in following the guidelines and keeping everybody safe. Regarding arrival times, we're noticing that more and more students are reporting to school at 8.30. Uh, our school does start at 8.20 and students are expected to be seated in the homeroom by 8.30. So uh, we would appreciate if you, if you do drop your student's child off to school, please drop them off by 8.20. Um, it's not fair to our students and teachers when students are late, um, they don't have time to get settled go to their locker, they're rushing straight to the homeroom. And uh, when students are late, our teachers, instead of focusing on the instruction, are processing the students who are coming in late and you know attending to that. Please continue using the alternative locations that were shared at the beginning of the school year. Uh, again, this week's Monday Minder has those alternative locations too. You could drop off on the streets surrounding the school. Uh, many parents have been doing that. That really helps us with the morning traffic. We have student of the month breakfast tomorrow uh, for eighth grade. It is virtual for the parents. For COVID reasons, we are limiting the visitors in the building. The coffee chat was canceled this month due to the same reason. We thank uh, PTA for sponsoring the breakfast. Uh, uh, you know, our staff, students, and administration, we all uh, truly appreciate um, you sponsoring the breakfast for student of the month. Our wingman program is still up and running. Earlier today, our student leaders uh, visited the sixth grade social studies classrooms, and I had the opportunity to go in the classroom and see the students um, engaging in meaningful conversations and activities. Uh, it was really nice to see everybody communicating and that social emotional aspect of it. Also, this week is a no-name calling week. Um, teachers will be running activities in the classroom to support this initiative. Um, additionally, we also are um, building goal is social and emotional learning, and teachers are incorporating activities uh, to support that initiative in the classroom as well. As Kevin said, volleyball tournament will be held after school on Thursday. Tickets are $5 each and they'll be sold during the lunch and all the proceeds that are collected will go to a charity. And again, this activity is for students only. Tickets will be sold during lunches. Kids are very um, excited about this, um, you know, and we were um, thankful that uh, any money that would be raised would go to, towards the charity. The marking period is ending on January 28th. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences are upcoming on February 17th. And again, um, our conferences, we're going to run them the same way we did last time. Parents will have a choice to do hybrid um, or online conferences. They'll be able to sign up for either or. Um, and then please look out for more information on that should be upcoming soon. And that's it for my updates today. And I'll pass it on to Ms. Capriglion, who will be sharing some classroom regarding the classroom activities that are going on in different content areas. So Ms. Caprig, you're up. I think you're on mute. I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Okay. Can you see the screen? Wait, hold yes, on a minute. Yes, it's visible. Can you see that now? Yes? Yes, Ms. Gabrig. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so here is the good news from our Woodrow Wilson staff. Oh boy, <laughs> I don't know what happened. It was okay. Anyway, in ESL, oh boy, I'm gonna go back one, hold on. Here we go. In English sixth grade news, Mrs. Colicchio's reading classes are identifying and writing strong theme statements based off of short stories. Mrs. Colicchio's writing classes are being introduced to the elements of literary analysis writing. 
In sixth grade math, the sixth grade class is raising funds for St. Jude. We've joined the fight to help end childhood cancer by participating in the Mathathon this January. We are solving math problems and raising funds to help St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You can also help us reach our fundraising goal by making a donation at, and there is the, um, the link for that, Every Little Counts. Last year, the sixth grade class uh, raised around $8,000, so they wanna thank you for their support. In social studies, sixth grade, Mrs. Yasko, Mrs. Settler, and Mrs. Spag's uh, social studies class, they just were about to begin a mock constitutional convention in which each student will take on the role of a state delegate to debate, whoa, whoa, sorry, hold on. What happened? Hold on. I hit a little button and something happened. Hi, okay. Here we are. Okay, can you see my screen? <laughs> this is terrible. Yes, anyway, okay, so they're gonna begin to debate various issues. Ms. Trippa, uh, to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., students spent time learning about the concept of activism and active citizenship. They each researched and presented about a young activist who was changing the world in a positive way. For example, climate change activists like Greta Thunberg and equitable education activists like Malala Yousafzai. In science sixth grade, Ms. Pearl in science classes examined the waxing and waning of light reflecting off the moon by creating models of the moon using Oreo cookies. And here we have a few pictures to show you how they did that. And here it comes, ta-da! I thought that was really, really cool with the, um, the Oreos showing the different um, moons. Okay, let's That's go funny. back. Isn't that cool? Yeah, very cool. Okay. In world languages, sixth grade, Mrs. Almanzar, Mrs. Ramirez, and Ms. Morris, our eighth grade students are working on a Google Slides presentation about, them, about themselves and their family. Next week, they will present their families to their classmates. In their presentation, they will include their names, ages, birthdays, descriptions, and favorite sports. Let's see. Seventh grade news. In seventh grade news, Ms. Saki's students are working on establishing a growth mindset as we gear up for literary analysis writing. We recited a class mantra that includes phrases like, I am successful, I am peaceful, I am free, I am wise. After students prime their brains for learning, they practice identifying symbols in a text. In Math Prime 7 class, Ms. Felipe, Mrs. Brookenstein, and Ms. Columbus are working on reviewing displays of proportional relationships by working in groups completing different stations. Students are making connections to real world scenarios using different means of representations. In Social Studies class, oh my, every time you touch something, it goes, I, I, okay, sorry about that. In social studies class, Ms. Hurwitz um, reported out that a few of her students submitted videos to a community-wide recognition of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this past Sunday. It was coordinated by the New Hope Baptist Church as part of the Metuchen Edison Interfaith Clergy Association. So Clay Caitlin Dimata, Lexi Shukla, Manal Kawaja, and Vashu Argawal were all included in the final montage. They had to respond to a prompt about Congressman John Lewis's quote, and you can watch the highlights of the program at this link. So she shared this link with us and can show you one little thing. Isn't, this is really, really cool. So if you go to here, 
and I believe it's around number 1530. But as 1530, the kids are being recognized. Cared for no matter what. 1530. Around there. <laughs> My name is Vash and today I'm going to be reflecting on the quote of John Lewis. The quote is, speak up, speak out, get in the way, get in good trouble, necessary trouble, and help redeem the soul of America. I want to talk about what this quote means. It means to get in good trouble and not bad trouble. Good trouble meaning you help the community, you support good things, right things, uh, make the society fair. And, and like make everyone happy. Wait a second, it's right here. I would probably change an unfair stereotypes such as people judging others based on their sexuality, their race, their religion, their color, their size, and their job. Getting into good trouble, okay, what is something that you're passionate about? not afraid to get into good trouble by standing up for what is right, no matter the consequences. My name is Vash and today I'm going to be reflecting on the quote of John Lewis. Okay. The quote is, Okay, so you get the idea. That was our kids. Hold on. Okay, so that was Miss Hurwitz. Now, Miss Chopra, in to honor, did I read this already? Yes. No, no, no. I am so confused at where I am. Okay. In science, Miss Cameron and Mrs. Dragona, wait a minute. I know what happened. Ms. Chopra also taught sixth grade and now she also did a similar activity um, in seventh grade as well. Except here, students heard activist Greta Thunberg when she spoke at the UN Climate Convention and explored initiatives like um, hashtag a thousand black girl books campaign led by Marley Diaz. In seventh grade science, Ms. Cameron and Mrs. Dragona, they reported out that they're working on their genetics unit determining how traits are inherited from parent to offspring. Students are creating monster families to further enhance their understanding of how traits are passed down from one generation to the next generation. Students also participated in team building challenges. In world languages, grade seven, the Spanish and French classes, our seventh grade world language students are finishing up a unit on the house by preparing a presentation about the chores that they complete. In eighth grade news, in honor of MLK Day, Ms. Saki's class read and analyzed the poem, The Legacy, and viewed the spoken word performance. We discussed the legacy of MLK versus the man and what we are called upon to do in order to create positive change. We also researched Coretta Scott King and discussed her contributions to the civil rights movement. In Math 8, Ms. Fortino and Ms. Mayulo, they report that Math Primate students are working on making connections using fractions in the real world. Students are using inch rulers to measure to the treasure, and they are going to be creating their own treasure maps where specific measurements will be key. In other eighth grade news, Ms. Perlin said that they're using wind-up toys to collect data in order to create a motion graph. They are also working on, let me see here. 
um, they're doing lateral reading to discern whether a website is credible or not. So using that knowledge to sort through given evidence and create a CER response, which is a claim evidence and reasoning response. Electives eight world languages are, or eighth grade world language students are finishing up an entertainment unit on art, music, and sports. We learned about a few styles of music popular around Spanish speaking countries, such as tango, flamenco, mariachi, and salsa. We are moving on to talking about some famous athletes who represent their Spanish speaking countries in soccer, baseball, tennis, and even motocross. Ms. Welch and Family and Consumer Science, they're getting deep into our savory labs this month and really focusing on time management. For the upcoming months, students are going to dive into the art of pasta making by making pasta dough from scratch and using a traditional pasta machine. For Valentine's Day, students are taking a break from savory and will be baking sugar cookies and learning the art of royal icing decorating. Lastly, the announcement for the WWMS yearbook. If you are interested, you can go to balfour.com until January 31st. Students are able to order the yearbook for $35. If you're interested, you can also email Ms. Mikowski at megan.mikowski at edison.k12njus. They're also getting ready to resell the class of 2022. Whoa. 2022, um, what's that called? The t-shirt for the eighth grade. Let me see where I'm at. And it's the class of 2021, 22, those t-shirts. And you can see Miss Kelly or Miss Mayulo, you, the link to the t-shirts will go live towards the end of January. So look out for it, ask your children about it. Information will be sent out via email to the eighth grade students and parents. Extracurricular activities, Coach Vito Pavisi is very proud of the boys basketball team's enthusiasm and effort during the season thus far. The players are growing as athletes and learning life lessons, such as being accountable and responsible while balancing schoolwork and being a part of the team. Eighth grade volleyball tournament after school tomorrow, eighth grade makes a team and they adopt a teacher to play with them. There are 14 teams. This is a fundraiser for a charity, possibly to go to St. Jude's. And lastly, I just wanted to share about our ESL classes. In ESL reading, we started the year by learning about how scientists called flavorists make foods taste good, but that processed food is not necessarily good for our health. Then we took a virtual field trip to the Ben and Jerry's ice cream factory in Waterbury, Vermont, and in ESL writing, they created a procedural essay also called a how-to about foods that we know how to prepare. Many students illustrated their writing with original photos to demonstrate the procedures step by step. So that is all I have. And now I'm trying to get back to you. Let's see. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Trying to get back. Oh my goodness. The bottom, you just have to unshare your screen. The, I'm trying to get back see. to our meeting. Okay. We haven't done Zoom, right, Miss Brooke? We've been doing. Ay, 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 yes, recently ay, we've been ay, using um, Google Meet. Um, Google, yeah, we've been using Google Google search Meet on now. Zoom on the top, um, Ms. Kaprig, that would show you where Zoom is. You know what? I'm looking at the bottom. I'm going back to our little Zoom thing. And then I have everybody on the side, but I can't get back to the meet, the actual. I think if you go on the bottom in the middle of the screen, it says share screen. If you just unclick that, that should do it. Yeah, but I'm not even. No, I know that, but I'm not even there. Oh, like, you're not, okay. I, I only have a, a thing like this little now. How about this on your screen, the third tab from top, like you have uh, yeah. email, Monday Minders, and then uh, Zoom. That's the one. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Thank you. It's oh, my God. Funny, goodness. Patty. <laughs> it's very funny. There's my email up for all to see. Okay, hold on.
Stop share. There we go. There we go. Yay. Thank you for your patience. Oh, you did it. <laughs> thank well, you. You did it. Yes. You thank you for it, sharing, Ms. Copriglion. And I would just like to add one thing. I actually was in a science class today and I happened to see the activity you mentioned. Um, students were creating virtual monsters using genotypes and phenotypes. Uh, so it was nice to see how they use their knowledge of Punnett squares and were able to create uh, you know, all different monsters using the genotype and phenotypes they learned in the classroom. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you, Mrs. Venterada and Ms. Grigion for uh, your updates. Um, it's always uh, so nice to hear what's going on in the school and uh, ex exactly and just what, you know, like what the kids are going through. So I, I really appreciate it. Um, so the next thing on our agenda is the Board of Education rep. Uh, I actually was, he was reached out today by our Board of Education rep. His name is Biril Patel. He's uh, unfortunately he's unable to join today, but he will be able to join us going forward to, at our next meeting on March 1st. So he'll be able to update us from a Board of Education standpoint. Then. Um, and I also just wanted to add, uh, we did participate in that COVID vaccine uh, that the schools were, were actually like uh, giving and it actually, it was run very well, it was very smooth. They, they actually did a really, really good job and they stayed on time. We went yesterday. And I'm, I'm really happy, like if there are parents out there who want, it's, it's a really, it's run really well. Like it's, there's no stress, you know, how you had to look for vaccines. So it's a really good thing that they did, I just have to say. Uh, okay, and now the officer's report. Uh, so, the, so we had the fundraiser um, on fundraising. So right now, again, like we don't have any memberships. We just take donations from parents. Uh, the recommended donation is $10. Uh, so um, again, you know, please donate to the PTA. You know, it all goes back to the students and to the schools uh, for all their needs. So we really appreciate all, all your support. Uh, we also had a candy sale back in October. Uh, we will be having, uh, you know, we had told the children that if they participated, they're going to have a basketball uh, event that will take place. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to schedule that last, you know, last year in the winter. So that will be take place in during the spring uh, I, with a date to be announced. Uh, it's probably looking more like May, but again, we'll, we'll work it out with you just to figure out what day works best. Um, and as far as the prizes go for the, uh, the students who sold more than one box, they will be receiving their prizes uh, at the end of this week. I, I believe they're arriving at the end of this week or uh, they'll be, so they'll either get it at the end of this week on Friday or they'll get it next week. Uh, I know a few students were asking about that. Uh, we also have some gray and navy blue masks for sale. Uh, and as long as some lanyards, um, again, I will put that in this, you know, I'll drop some off at the school just so, you know, for like samples of anybody wants to see, but I will also see if I could put it on the Monday minders to see if and there, there's any interest in that. Um, we have two more PTA meetings left this year on uh, March 1st, tentatively and April, April 12th. Uh, we had a total of five and as part of the uh, being part of the PTA organization of New Jersey, we were supposed to have five meetings. Uh, they will remain virtual. And again, like, as you know, the Zoom link will be sent on the Monday Minders weekly, along with the agenda. Um, and again, that's all I had. I mean, I know Girish, uh, if you know, if you want the update, I know we hadn't really like spoken, but if you wanted to talk about the book fair, I don't believe there's any updates. Uh, yeah, no update, Jocelyn, on that one. I mean, we'll, we'll still try to do an in-person one in, uh, I think it's April. Okay. Um, then the only other thing is uh, the kids are still planning on the uh, on the on the food on the Chipotle fundraiser. Right? Yes, so that's, that's still that's still in the planning. And uh, okay, as far as so, unfortunately, Ming and Sophia were unable to join us today, but uh, they did give me their update on the eighth grade dance. So planning is taking place as we speak. It's still scheduled uh, for June tenth. Um, they'll be looking for volunteers shortly uh, to participate and help out with the decorations and whatnot for the eighth grade dance. Uh, so an email and the meeting will be set up shortly after that. Um, again, 
And moving on to events, um, again, I mean, we still plan on having assemblies, but again, you know, we'll provide more information as they come. Uh, right now, we don't really have anything pending, but um, again, if there's any other information, then we'll, we'll be sure to share it with you. Uh, and as Mrs. Menderada was, was speaking, uh, we have our eighth grade student of the month that was supposed, you know, supposed to take place uh, tomorrow and you know, with the virtual meeting for the parents. But again, uh, she'll provide more information as we go because now that we have the delayed opening. Um, and then the coffee chats, unfortunately, we actually were supposed to have one, but I get you, but you still plan on having more depending on how with the COVID uh, protocols and everything like that. That's still the plan, yes? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and again, I think we would, you also talked about parent new diversity um, and we hope to have that one day, but again, we'll see how that goes. Um, and again, along with the community service day that we look to have and um, as well as the career day. Um, I'm actually looking for a chairperson to kind of have that, uh, whether we have it virtually or, or whatnot, it would be really nice, I think, for the students to just kind of come together and, and uh, you know, see basically like what career is out there, just to give them an idea, just, you know, to just start the thinking process going about what they'd like to do when they grow up. Um, and then again, uh, as far as requests goes, if there's any teachers requests, please feel free to send them. We're always, uh, you know, willing to help and support the school um, and the students to, to help any anything you need. And that's really all I had for today. We're planning the next meeting for uh, March 1st. And again, um, we'll have more information on the eighth grade dance then, and as well as the Board of Education rep to come and give us all an update. That's all I had. Uh, again, are there? I'd like to turn it over to the uh, Mrs. Benderada or the parents if they had any questions they'd like to, uh, to ask while we have them here. Thank you, Jocelyn. We truly appreciate all your support and thank you for the teacher grants. I know teachers are always looking for you know some supplies for the students or things that can definitely be used in the classroom. So we'll we'll reach out to you. Yes, uh, definitely. Requests from the teachers. Very good. I just have a question about the teacher grants. Will there be a form to fill out or how, how are we doing this? Uh, you can just reach out to me or email me okay. and whatnot. Yeah, I, I don't really have a form and I never received a form uh, okay. that they were used, but you could just send me an email or. Okay. And is there a cap on how much they can ask for? You know, uh, is it $50 or? Yeah, I, I think it's, I, I don't believe there was a, there was a cap. Okay. You have to be careful there. Well, I mean, relatively speaking. <laughs> exactly, yes. Within reason. <laughs> They'll be asking for a new microwave, new refrigerator. Right, it's every classroom. <laughs> funny, funny. Yes, so I'd like, yeah, if there's any parents who have any questions, please feel free. If I can help in any way. And the parents have been very good. They actually just email email me um, directly onto the uh, to the email site that we have email address rather. If there's nothing else. Thank you, everyone, for joining today's meeting. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next meeting. Stay warm and stay safe, and be well. Thank you. Good job, Thank you. Bye.